Hey guys, and welcome to Creators Campfire. I'm your host, Bav, and this is episode 38. Now, tonight I have a very special guest. I realise I say that every week, but that's because they are all special to me. Now, I was very lucky to get to know tonight's guest over the last couple of months, and it has been awesome. So, guys, please welcome Nick Lewis. Nick, hello. Hello, Bob. How's it going? <laughs> it's going very well. How are you? Good, good. This is... Um, this is a, f- a few weeks in the making, <laughs> um, but this is awesome that we're finally doing this. So firstly, thank you. No, thanks for having me on. Amazing. Right. So I'm going to give a brief background, but then I'm going to pass over to you because I think you can do yeah. a much better job. So oh, I Nick don't know about that. Is <laughs> you absolutely can. So uh, Nick is an interior design YouTuber, but started only back in June, and I guess what is absolutely amazing is that he has just hit 150,000 subs on his channel. So firstly, congratulations on that, because that is an amazing oh, thank achievement. thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been kind of crazy. Yeah, the last couple of months yeah. particularly has been pretty nuts, but... Yes, the, the rise is amazing, and we'll dig into all of that soon. But do you want to give a much better background to yourself than I can? No, that sums me up. Uh, that's good. Um, okay. No, I, <laughs> I started the channel uh, back in June. I had never made a video before. I had never been on YouTube. I basically just said to my partner, I'm like, I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And he was like, yes, I've thought for years that you should do it. And uh, I'd never really seriously considered it. But I actually did it because I had another business that I was promoting, and I thought being an authority on interior design would be helpful to sort of promote that business. So it was a, it was a business, it was a direct to consumer sort of bathroom and kitchen fixture company. So I had a renovation and it was really difficult to get my own bathroom fixtures that I really wanted that were like high quality and beautiful and whatever. Um, and at a good price, like it's actually the whole renovation industry is just a mess. And so I thought, Hey, um, why not build a business that would, um, sort of disrupt that kind of industry. And so I built that business. And I thought instead of kind of giving my product away to influencers, I thought, why not try to have a little bit of a platform myself? Um, and we can go into all that because that's been kind of, um, that was kind of the, the start of the, the journey. And so I created the YouTube channel and um, then the YouTube channel sort of became a lot bigger than the business. And now, I don't know, Bob, this is like part-time therapy session because like I got to figure out what I'm going to do because I've basically got this business, which is good, but like the YouTube channel has completely blown away my expectations. And so now um, kind of that's where I'm at. So the last, as I said, the last couple of months has been really crazy, but um, yeah, the growth has been uh, phenomenal and it's been uh, kind of a wild ride, but that's, that's basically where I'm at. Yeah. Amazing. The answer is that you should just go all in on YouTube. <laughs> That's what I've learned recently is, is the answer. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it, yeah, it, as I said, it was there to support the business and then uh, it became so much bigger than the business. So now I'm still trying to figure out kind of how do you balance that. But then I'm also thinking they're all, they also complement each other very well because I've had a lot of sales from the business. Even though I spend a fraction of my time on that business, I still get sales because people get to know me and they get comfortable with me. Basically, it's like a it's been so successful that now I don't really know like if I should keep doing what I kind of originally was doing before so that's kind of where I'm at yeah 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 there there are they are tough decisions and it kind of like you said actually here's a good so going in and starting your channel what were your expectations of kind of what YouTube is and then how has your journey maybe even just in a few months differed from what you had expected um so the the growth itself was way faster than i had thought i mean people tell you probably rightfully so don't set goals like hey i want this many subscribers by this date and i want this many views by this date don't do that well i of course did that so my original plan was in june i wanted a thousand subscribers by the end of december and i wanted which felt incredibly ambitious at the time, 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. That was my original goal, which was incredibly ambitious. And so when I started on YouTube, I kind of thought that it would be, it it was much more about like exponential growth, I guess, than I thought. So my expectations were that growth would happen in a quite a linear fashion. You'd get two subs a day and then maybe four subs and five. And slowly, you know, you kind of have that mentality, but you don't, I don't think I realized how slow it would be at first, but then how quickly it can snowball. And that was, I think, a very different um, 
yeah, that was kind of very different from my original expectations. And in terms of the work, um, there's a lot more to making video than I originally thought that there was. Like I, as I said, I'd never made a video before. Um, you know, I, if I accidentally clicked on iMovie, it was like an, it was an accident on my MacBook and I quickly had to close it because I didn't know how to use it. I'd never made iMovie, but I basically jumped in. I actually took um, Ali Abdel's uh, Skillshare course and you can still sort of see a lot of his editing style or at least things that are in that course. Because I think you've taken that course, if I'm not mistaken, I have. right? So he you made me take see... that course. <laughs> <laughs> well, rightfully so, because it's a good course. Yes. Um, yes. This podcast is sponsored by Skillshare. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like that course is amazing. And that really was how I learned. And so I bought Final Cut and just kind of dove in headfirst and took his course. And that's how I edited my first video. So from the time I said I'm starting a YouTube channel to the time I launched that first video back in June is probably about two weeks. Wow. Yeah. So, but my expectations, I think, were that I didn't have any clue how to make a video. And I thought growth was going to be kind of slow and steady and like in a linear fashion. And it ended up being way more complex than I thought it was going to be. And the growth, when it picks up, can be um, like scary and frightening and just incredibly exponential and um, sort of, yeah, a little bit crazy. Yeah. So, you're right. It it did massively pick up because when we first started speaking, which I think was towards the end of January, I think you were on around 60K. Yeah. Um, but that had almost come within the previous month, right? Because at the end of the, if I'm, if I'm doing this right, in about yeah. December, you were around four or 10K? I was, I was around 4,000 subscribers at the beginning of December. December 1st, I checked just before, like earlier today, and it was just over 4,000 subscribers on December 1st. And then I think I finished December. I had a few videos that did quite well. And I think I got to about 30,000 subscribers by the end in December. Um, and then I had two videos that did very, very well in the first week of January. And uh, that growth was, expl so one of my videos, I think, currently has about 1.2 million views on it, which really drove tons of traffic to the channel. And then what happens is, is that people then caught that video, YouTube picks it up, it becomes suggested. And then I was getting so many comments on my video saying, I just binged all your content. I just, you know, watched a whole bunch of you have that back catalog. Cause at that point I had had, I mean, six months, I guess at the time, six, seven months worth of content that people could go back to and, and binge. And so, uh, I guess that gave me some credibility for people to subscribe. So I was able to convert, well, I think it was something like, yeah, about a hundred thousand. What, what is it now? It's now mid March. And so that's, um, the other 130,000 subscribers have just been since then. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. We first connected probably when I had about 56, 60,000, but at that point, the two videos uh, that really, well, a few videos that really had taken off were, were well on their way. So I was, I was definitely in the middle of the craziness, I think when we spoke. Yeah. And, and actually you just mentioned a really good point because I think going in people are like, Oh, I want something that's going to go viral almost straight away. But what you had is you had something to do that, but you had the back catalog to back it up. And therefore when you, when someone was clicking on it, they then go, Oh, there's another 30 amazing videos here that I can go and binge. And YouTube was like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Totally. And I think that's really, um, yeah, there's a lot there. I mean, like, I think um, the suggested algorithm is complex, and I'm not going to pretend that I really understand it. But I would say that getting people to watch multiple videos, increasing that viewer session, the amount of times that people see multiple videos, uh, especially if they're yours, you sort of proven to YouTube, not only can you get people to click and watch, but you can get people to click and watch and watch and watch and watch. And I think that really makes a massive difference and sort of lights up the algorithm. At least that's sort of been like kind of my experience. Um, just because that, you know, I don't want to say it was a slow build because it was six months and I don't want to say that it was slow when I know people that have spent years, right, to get to um, 10,000 or 1,000 or 10,000 subscribers. So I don't want to say that, but uh, there was some sort of a back catalog of people, you know, it was like 30 videos or something at the time that people could go and watch, which I know in the grander scheme of YouTube is not that much. Um, but it was enough, obviously, to convince uh, people to to subscribe. Yes, exa exactly. If you had gone in and that would be in the first, second or even like the fifth, it's not the same thing as having that, which is awesome. Um, but also you mentioned about having that back catalog, they still have to find it. So did you do something specific with your end screens or do you point them? Because again, this is something that we've been talking about recently um, off, well, in, in the course, but like, 
how do you like what is your kind of strategy around hey here's here's what you can go and find on my channel yeah, so I did, um, I made a decision. I watched a YouTube video from, specifically I can point out one video that I saw that was awesome and it was by video creators. I don't know if you know their YouTube channel. Um, and they talked about the suggested algorithm. And he said that, um, I think it's Tim Schmoyer is his name. And Tim said like the, the, the way, like what I just kind of mentioned about increase, the suggested algorithm works off of how long you can convince people to stay on YouTube. So it's not just about, um, hey, this is an eight minute or a 10 minute video and people made it to the six minute mark or the two minute mark or eight minute mark or whatever, obviously that matters. But um, if you can convince them to watch more, then that makes a big difference, I think, to YouTube because they can, uh, well, you know, show more ads and uh, that's kind of what pays for the show. So what Tim said, which I totally did, was the call to action that you should make. I try to do this in my videos. One call to action that I do is watch another video. So I don't tell people to like, I don't tell people to subscribe. I'm, I'm over that. That's something I used to do uh, because I thought that was a YouTuber thing to say, you know, smash that like button. And that's kind of a bit of a meme now. But for me, it was like, watch another video. So what I would do is at the end of the video, I would do a hard pitch for the next video that I think would make logical sense for that person to watch. So if I just talked about my 2021 trend video, I might point them to my kitchen design trends video, or I might point them to um, a specific thing. Like if there's a certain topic that's trending and I've already done a, a video on that topic, I might refer back to that specific video and say, if you liked this video, you'll probably like this one. Um, and I think that that that's a huge part of the success of the channel because, and I know that works by the way, because I see in my analytics, when this video is over, what video did I point to? And if that first video is successful, I'll see a spike in the second video um, when that first one goes live. So I know it works because uh, I've seen it in the data. Yes. So that means you're obviously, before you're recording and you're making your notes, you know full well at the end of that, which one you're pointing them to. And therefore, uh, you don't have to be like, just pop something random on the screen afterwards. 100%. The other thing I do, which, um, again, really helps that uh, average view duration is when I finish my video and I've finished the last topic, I'll literally edit it so that the next frame is me doing an end screen. So what I don't do, which, again, I've done this and many other YouTubers do, is, you know, my last tip for you guys is blah, blah, blah. Or... Um, you know, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's been really amazing to do. Oh, I just love this video. Oh, it was so much fun. Um, let me tell you all about the idea of where I came up with this. Like, basically, no, like stop all that. Basically what I do is I say, I end my last tip and I say, like I literally go into the next frame and I just start talking about the other video that you should watch. So don't give the opportunity for people to click away is basically what I'm saying. I just constantly try to say, you know, once the video is done, like once the tips are done, get out. <laughs> and cue end screen and get them watching another video yes yeah yeah no that's fantastic advice and do you create playlists and what are your thoughts on playlists or are you just happy to point them to a video um so i've heard youtube has really encouraged people for to do playlists um apparently when you get over hundred thousand subscribers you get access to some sort of like account manager did you know that i didn't know that i did not know that i'm very far away from that <laughs> but trust me i am not i no one's called me so like <laughs> <laughs> no one's called me up, so don't feel bad. Um, I have no account manager at YouTube. Uh, so for me, it's like, um, yeah, I, what was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> playlists. How playlists. important do you playlists. think they are or Amazing. aren't? Yes. yes let's talk playlists. <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay. So yes, they're great in the sense that it, if you get somebody in a playlist, then that's awesome because then you can get them to watch multiple playlists, obviously at a time. Uh, if you can get, sorry, watching multiple videos at a time, and that would be a great thing. I will say that when, and I'm still testing whether or not it makes sense to cue my end, that, that like end pitch, if you will, like that call to action to watch another video. I'm not sure how effective it is to point to a playlist because I just think as a viewer, that's a big commitment. When someone says, check out this playlist, I don't know, it just feels a little bit like, do I have time for that? Well, if you say, click on this video and it's gonna provide a very specific value, um, I don't know if that's better. So I actually, my most recent video I just did, I made a playlist on the subject because, well, it's the second in a series that's the same as the one video that blew up that got like 1.2 million views and I'm not stupid, I'm gonna do sequels of that obviously because it did well, so you're gonna double down on what works. So I did a second version of that video, literally this just this last Saturday, and I created a playlist 
on that subject of you know, the trends I don't like or the trends I hate, which is kind of that video that really took off. Um, and I pointed to a playlist and I don't know if it's working because it's been about, you know, five days, but um, I'm curious if it would. I think where it works really well is if you have a series where, um, you know, for example, one thing that I might kind of that I'm, I'm looking into is if I build a house, for example, or if I do, if I were to say renovate my apartment, um, that would be an example of a series where I think the playlist might make total sense because you might enter on video number seven, but you want to say, hey, you might want to check out video one because one through six is kind of the story and, you know, seven is part of this kind of series. So I think then playlists are really great because um, that's like a real considerable value to the viewer to be able to, you know, enter in at halfway through a series and be pointed back to the beginning of a series so you can sign up, walk them through all the videos. Then I think that's incredibly powerful because now you're showing YouTube that a person can watch multiple videos at a time. Um, and it makes sense for the viewer experience because they're able to see all the videos from start to finish and kind of walk through, which is, I think, an incredible value for them as well. So then I think a playlist makes a lot of sense. So I do do playlists, but... Um, I don't know. I'm not super sold on them. I think it depends on the circumstances. I think that's a really good point, actually, because psychologically, it seems like a much bigger investment. Um, and I have heard that if you are going to do a play playlist, keep it small so that it's, it's not that mentally taxing. But actually, you if every video you have points to a well thought out another video, then you're naturally creating that chain. So that that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I, I think in the end, it comes down to like having empathy for your viewer, which is the number one the tip that I give any new YouTuber is like having empathy for the viewer. Like what value are you creating for the, it's not that much more complicated than that in order to really like do well, I think on this platform is have empathy for their problems and know that your videos are providing a small piece or the full solution to those problems. And if you can't relate to those problems or that experience, then you probably aren't gonna do very well on YouTube. So I think for me, it's like, how would it feel for me if I'm getting like, hey, click on this playlist for all of my design tips. It's like, I don't know how big that, Video, a playlist is like I don't know do I do I really want to get stuck in like another seven seven videos that I don't know if I'm interested in the topic so um as I said I'm not super super sold on them I'm testing them out a little bit but there are some you know specific examples I think uh like that renovation I think is another example of where you know having a, a full series makes a lot of sense yeah no that's cool and and I guess the other thing you mentioned there is about how you almost get out of a video very quickly is in you finish it, you don't give them the indication that that's the last tip and then it's end screen. But on the flip side, even with your intro, and I guess this comes back to having that empathy for the viewer, instead of spending two minutes on an intro to a video, you are also very much get to the point when, when you start a video and get to the value. Yeah, I actually had feedback on a video the other, like I think I saw it yesterday, it was just a comment and I actually this person commented and said, you took way too long to get to the point. And I was like, that is feedback I have never received on my videos. Like I always get video, always the comment consistently is I love that you get right to the point. So I actually made um, a my, my own personal kind of goal is that if I'm not in the topic within the first ideally 30 seconds, if not 45 seconds, then I need to cut a lot of my intro, which kind of sucks because sometimes I really want to get a lot of information across in that first 45 seconds, like you want to build people to get to know your personality or, you know, understand a little bit about your circumstances. Like you want to kind of build some of that in to create some of those maybe kind of brand elements for people to really get to know you. But the truth is, is that if someone's clicking on your top 10 Ikea products, which is videos like I, that's the type of videos that I do. If I'm not saying number 10 on my list is the, you know, whatever Alex door set, if I'm not doing that in the first 30 or 45 seconds, I feel like I've kind of failed the viewer. And I do that because really what YouTube, wants and what the viewer really wants is you know what is the topic that you're going to pick pick good topics um obviously that's kind of the, the the most obvious one but kind of the one people don't focus as much on to be honest pick good topics that people find interesting and then the thumbnail and the title are there to communicate the value that you're going to get that's going to be about that topic communicate the value so once you land on the video don't squander it by just going on about your life like no one cares about you know, the crap going on in your life, like get to the point and start delivering the value that you promised in the title and the thumbnail. And so that's something, again, it's empathizing with the viewer and respecting their time. Um, 
you know, because on YouTube, you don't have, like, you're on a podcast here right now. Like, we have the time to sit here for 45 minutes and chat. And people are probably in their car or whatever. They're cooking dinner. Like, they, this is kind of background for them. But, like, on YouTube, it's very active. You just got to get in, deliver value, and get out. Yeah. It's no, just I a different platform. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. And that, that's a really good point, actually, because I think people... I, this is kind of an off topic but with repurposing people are just might put the same thing on every platform and not really think about it but everybody consumes media on every single platform differently and you've got to be really aware of what you're putting where and you're right this podcast is is, is someone leisurely listening to I assume versus if this was a YouTube video and a clip or something it's okay well get get to the point why am I here otherwise I'm gonna as a, a billion more videos I could be watching right now. Totally. I, I mean, it, I will also say that it depends on what your, like, it depends exactly on kind of what your, what your thing is. Like everybody has their own way of exploring, like all these rules are meant to be broken depending on who you are, right? And like the point of your channel. So like, D'Angelo Wallace is a really good example. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, he does these hour long videos that are incredible, that are almost like little mini documentaries, but he talks a lot about, um you know different youtubers and his videos are an hour and he does them like once a month and that it makes total sense that he would only do them once a month because they're incredibly complex difficult to edit um i'm sure his research is like he spends a crazy amount of time before he even sits down in front of the camera so um he you know that's the trend he does the opposite he's saying he can hold, if he thinks he can hold his interest you can hold your interest for an hour and he seems to because he's got like two million subscribers um he's doing a great job at being able to so for every rule there's always someone that's proving it wrong and i think he's a really good example but i would say for most people for most content um you know getting in and if you can't hold you someone's attention for an hour you can only hold their attention for eight minutes then give it a really good eight minutes, right? Don't waste their time for the first three minutes. Uh, that's kind of more the point. It's just making sure you're you're delivering the value for the entire length of the video. Yeah, that's a really good point because three minutes of an hour is very different to three minutes of an eight minute video. <laughs> totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If D'Angelo Wallace couldn't hold your, and I did, I got sucked into his videos the other night. Oh my God, I watched <laughs> like three of them and I was like, I just basically on some, uh, no, if not stupid stuff, but like, I don't know. It was like Jeffree Star and like all this like YouTube drama. And I was like, I hate this stuff, but he's so engaging. And he like feels like you're, he just does such a good job of helping you sort of navigate this crap on YouTube, <laughs> to be honest. And, and you get sucked in and, and, and it's, he's really good at it. Um, and again, he can hold your attention for a full hour. And I mean, YouTube just loves that. That's obviously right up there. Yeah. Yeah, completely. So you are someone who is very switched on when it comes to analytics and the stuff behind the scenes and have yeah, obviously learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, you are, I promise you. And you've obviously learned a lot as you've gone on and kind of picked up things like throughout your journey. But what are some of the things that you would say are the most important to kind of focus on? Because I know everyone has their own take and, and like you said, everyone's channel is very slightly different, but at the core of it, YouTube just wants eyes on its platform. So for people that are kind of, you know, going, oh, I don't know what to focus on, like me, like where would you say, hey, focus your attention? Well, uh, in terms of like the analytics or in terms of just, yeah, I would say, um, well, I mean, Mr. Beast famously kind of said this in a, in a video once when he was, and obviously he's kind of killing it on the platform. So he understands it better than anyone, better, better than anyone. Really all YouTube wants is for you to click and watch, right? Like that's really in the end. Like I do think that, um, like a lot of things in life, the more you understand it, the more, like the more you learn, the more simple things actually tend to be. So you can learn about the algorithm you know, there's who even knows and they're changing it all the time. Uh, but in the end, the most important is people click and watch. So what does that mean? Well, click comes down to the three T's, right? Which is topic, thumbnail and title. Um, people talk about thumbnails and titles a lot as they should, but cause they are important, but I think topics are the least forgiving in my experience and least talked about of those three, which is, um, you know, you can have a great thumbnail and a great title, but if the topic isn't interesting to people, then, you know, you can't, like, the, the thumbnail's not going to save you, generally, uh, assuming unless you're doing some, like, weird clickbait, but even that's probably ill-advised. Um, and then the keep watching. Yeah, because that means... will have the opposite effect, right? Oh, because if somebody clicks on it and then, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you could do, like, there's things that you can do, like, you know, the secret to the algorithm, and you can, like, <laughs> you know, you can kind of do something cheesy to get people to click, and but you have to deliver on what is the secret to the algorithm, otherwise people aren't stupid. They are going to click away, and that's going to kill your watch time, and that causes uh, other issues as well, and YouTube doesn't reward that. Uh, so I would say, you know, when I look back at the video that did really well, um, it was an interesting topic, obviously, that people really cared about. Um, the thumbnail, I guess, you know, seemed to appeal to people. And in the end, I noticed it did well right away because it had a, you know, a good, good, good considerable amount of views fairly quickly. And of those views, the watch time percentage was around 70%, um, which is quite, I would say that's quite high. And I think if you have a video where you can hold somebody's attention for six, six, seven, eight minutes on a 70, you know, and, and, the, and you have 70% watch time, I think that's a pretty good indication that people like your video and, and YouTube's going to reward that. And, and again, that, so it's really just click through and watch time. That's really the most important. Okay. So, so on those two, what is, so click through rate, what would yeah. you say is a good click through rate? Well, uh, so click through is interesting because in my experience, it's, so when it's hard to say so when you're small um i would say anywhere in the like four, in the end you're trying to just compete against the other people that are on the platform to a certain degree right so it really just kind of depends on what's already there because youtube's serving up content that they think is going to be the best well that depends on what else is kind of in your niche in your area but i would i would say four to seven percent is probably good but at the end of the day, it sort of also depends on how big your audience is. So as your audience gets bigger, um, I find it changes over time more frequently. So again, you start with a fairly high click through rate, like it's not crazy for me to get a click through rate over 10% uh, the first day a video goes live, which that just makes sense because that's going to be my my subscribers, my regular people that know that I upload on a Saturday morning and they're there to click and that makes sense. But as YouTube starts, if your video is starting to do well, YouTube's going to start serving it to new audiences. They're going to start serving it on maybe hopefully browse and suggested. They're going to start testing new types of people to test that, that content or that video on. So don't be surprised when YouTube starts testing out new content that um, the percentage is going to go down because a test is oftentimes going to fail as YouTube starts to test it out. So I think um, that kind of matters a lot is that, yeah, you've got... Um, so, so that's why I say it's really difficult to give a range for what a good click-through rate is because, um, yeah, it can vary from from 4% to 10%, but then it'll go down. So that video that did really well probably had something like an 8 10% click-through rate, but if you went now, it's probably got something more like 3 or 4%. Um, and the watch time went down because it's serving it to new audiences. So now, yeah, as I said, it was 70% uh, view duration when it first launched, and then it went down to something like, um, what is it now? Probably, it's still probably around 50, but definitely went down because it's served to new audiences and those people don't like my content and that's totally fine. Some of those people do and they subscribe. How dare obviously. they? Yeah, exactly. Some of them did <laughs> and they subscribed and that's cool. And some of them didn't and, you know, it's a big platform. So hope you found something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> More interesting um, than me. Yeah. Is there anything, Nick? I don't think there. I don't think there is. But you know, no. maybe D'Angelo Wallace. He's great too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I have. I have. Uh, I'm going to remember one of those questions to come back to. But you made an interesting point about how the things you look at, and I guess it should be no surprise, but the, the analytics you kind of, or the numbers you pay attention to at the beginning of when you start YouTube versus as you grow, and you know, you hit the 50, 100, 150k mark change over time is there anything else that is kind of something that people should be aware of or key to keep in mind as as people grow yeah i think that when i started i had a i focused on search and i advise every new creator i think it's a good idea to focus on search that was something that was very important um, to me on YouTube. First, have a conversation with yourself on whether or not you want to grow. Um, and I did. And then I thought, okay, I do want to grow on the platform. This is something that is important to me. Uh, so I would like to focus on search because I think in the end, views matter more than subscribers, right? I think YouTubers, I mean, a lot of people say that because their answer to that is views are more important than subscribers because YouTube doesn't pay you for subscribers, they pay you for views. And that is true, but that's really not the full story. It's because views turn into subscribers 
and subscribers turn into views, so it can seem like it's a bit of a chicken and the egg. However, the only way people can get subscribers is for people to view your content first. So it's not chicken and the egg because you have ways of gaining subscribers through views, um, and that's why views, in my opinion, are more important. I hope I kind of explained that properly. But so now it comes down to how do you get views when you're small? And I think search, in my opinion, in my experience anyway, is the best way at the beginning um, because you can use tools like TubeBuddy and vidIQ or whatever, and you can find topics that are not super, super competitive. Um, and you can kind of play around with your titles and topics and sort of find something where you think that your content can compete with what's already on the platform. So I used to do a lot more very specific videos around like granite versus quartz countertops. Like I would do very specific things in like the renovation uh, niche. I did a few videos in that and it did very well for me because a lot of the content that's on there um, on YouTube is, and I don't wanna you know, talk down to anybody, but it's generally not as competitive. It's a lot of you know, small mom and pops that are just kind of recording with their iPhone. And I thought, oh, you know what? I can maybe have a chance of ranking in search for some of these searched items. They're not gonna be massively searched, but they, there's enough traffic there that I can maybe you know, compete in that area. But as I scaled, I realized that search becomes less and less important because it's actually a very small part of how people are consuming content on YouTube. Um, and for that, I made I shifted strategies, again, like I mentioned with video creators, and I focused more on browse and suggested. And for that, it was a lot more less to do with search and more about um, you know, hooking people into my content and delivering, you know, getting those views and, and really sort of once I had that audience, it was all about how do I get my audience to click and how do I get them to watch more. And from there, that told YouTube, oh, Nick made a really good video. And then it starts to serve it to more people. And that's where Browse and Suggested sort of really took off for me. That's super, super good advice. I am definitely in the former group. Um, so have been paying attention to that. <laughs> yeah. And I think for you, like your YouTube channel is, is you're doing great for ranking, trying to rank and search, right? Because there's a specific video talk. If you're trying to look for a review on a specific book title or something like that, like you're going to search and, oh, there's Bob. And, oh, my God, she's doing better than maybe some of the other reviews that are out there and your videos engaging and you're lovely and all those wonderful things and Thank people you. click and they watch and they subscribe. But then eventually you will find, oh, I have to, um, you know, to get that true exponential growth, what gets you to a thousand isn't what gets you to a hundred thousand, right? So you have to think, okay, you're going to shift strategies a little bit more about like, what is it about browse and suggested that's going to convince people uh, that's going to convince YouTube or at least the algorithm or signal to the algorithm that this is good content and they need to show it up to new audiences. Yep, makes a whole lot of sense. So the other question that I wanted to come back to was, was for your viral video because 1.2 million views is damn good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what? I'm, go on. <laughs> objectively, like I was yeah. like, oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, because I, I had like, I had, I don't even know if I had hit 100,000 views on a video. Maybe I had before that video was like the first to hit 100,000 and then eventually hit a million. Yeah, which was crazy. Yeah, how does that feel first? <laughs> Honestly, like, it obviously feels good. Like, I don't want to say it doesn't because um, you know, anybody that would, would obviously really love to have a video that took off like that. And, and I'm grateful for the people that that watched it. And, and um, but it was overwhelming at the end, at, at the same time, right? Like friends were texting me and saying, did you know that your video now has like, the stadium downtown has like 60,000 seats and your video has been seen by like seven or 10 stadiums full or whatever it was. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. So that was overwhelming. And then um, as YouTube pushes your content out to new audiences, uh, you're going to, as I mentioned earlier, like you're going to get a lot of people that aren't going to care for your content. And that's the nicest way I can put it um, because you know, there are people that are really, really not going to like your content and, and, and YouTube's going to start testing audiences that really, really don't care for you. So you're going to get a lot more um, dislikes, a lot more controversy in the comment section. And, uh, it, you know, it felt, it felt at times very overwhelming. Like it was, I was getting, you know, Instagram messages and, uh, from people saying, didn't I work with you at Starbucks like 20 years ago? And now I'm watching a YouTube video of you. Like where, are, do you know what I mean? Like people just came out of the woodwork from, the past that <laughs> were like, am I watching you on YouTube right now? Like it was weird. Not to say like everybody in the world saw this video, but it starts to it starts to kind of impact your your life in a weird way. Absolutely. A million um, people is a lot of people. <laughs> 
if, yeah, it feels like a lot of people, and, and it is a lot yeah. of people. Uh, but um, yeah, like, and then it was, um, and it was fun, and it was, it was an interesting ride. And I think at one point, like, I, I gained seven. I think my my peak was getting about seventy five hundred subscribers. I gained in a day, which was like. Like before that, it was like, oh, I gained another thousand, and then fifteen hundred, and then three thousand, and then it peaked. I think at about seventy five hundred subscribers in a single day gained, and it was like, that's an insane amount of people. Not only just watched, but um, yeah, that one video. I think it also peaked. I think it was like a hundred and maybe I can't remember how it was a hundred and something thousand views in a single day or something, or like eighty thousand or ninety thousand views. Like that's kind of where it peaked out, um, and it still does well for me. It still gets like five, ten thousand views a day, which is just crazy. That's awesome. But I'm, I'm glad you pointed out the negative kind of impact because I think, again, people go in and go, I, I, coming back to it, I need a viral video or I want a viral video. But it's not it's not all it's cracked up to be, I suppose. And, and I'm not saying this because, hey, I haven't had a viral video. It's like that. I think there are general, like gen, genuinely there are, it's not all positive, I guess. And it has an impact on you. It has an impact on your channel, potentially on your strategy and your direction. And there are negatives to it, which totally suck. And, and it would be nice if it weren't the case. But I think there's definitely good to raise and for people to be aware of. Yeah. And it's kind of, I think for a lot of people, well, I found this um, and I don't know any YouTubers like you, like I know you and that's about it. So I don't really have any YouTuber friends. Uh, so I didn't really have any, and, and again, like the, the interesting part is that when you're in the few hundred to a thousand, whatever subscriber range, which again, I think at the time, I think at the time I had like 30,000 subscribers, but again, it was happening so quickly. There's not enough time to build relationships. And, you know, let's be real when someone's like, you've got 400 subscribers and you message someone like, do you want to be my friend? You know, it's funny. They don't really pick up the phone. They don't really respond <laughs> to, to me. And so uh, it's not exactly like everybody was like lining up to be my YouTube friend. So I didn't really have kind of anybody to really talk to about how the process was, but you're right. And, and you don't, you feel bad about talking about how it was difficult in some ways because it was awesome in the end and you're grateful for it, but you don't want like obviously everybody or so many people would absolutely kill for that. I mean, people are probably listening right now. Like, I don't want to listen to this guy complain about having a million views. Like I would do anything for that. And I totally understand that because I would have said before that like that would have been an amazing experience and what a fun ride. But I think you can't ignore that it can be overwhelming. And um, it changed everything on my channel. It changed the comment section, it changed how I view comments, it changed my relationship in some ways with my community of just, um, you know, before it was the same people commenting over and over, and I felt like I knew them. Um, and I still do. And I still have that it's stabilized a little bit more now. But uh, it does feel that as YouTube pushes you out to new, new people that, you know, it can kind of change your relationship with your community a little bit in a in a way that, um, yeah, so like, I, you, I, I, I've learned to establish boundaries, I will say. Like now, um, we can talk a little bit more about that, but like for me now, like my process, and again, this is not YouTuber best practice, so like please don't necessarily listen to this advice, but I used to um, like respond to every comment and that's what every small YouTube advice growth channel will say, whatever, like you should respond to every comment, engage with your community, blah, 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 and all that is true. Um, but when you're dealing with that and it's if it starts to affect your content or it starts to affect your mental health where you start feeling overwhelmed and you start feeling like you just don't want to make content because you just don't want to face it, which can happen. Um, what I do now is I post a video and I give it, so I'm on Pacific time here in uh, North America. I'm in Vancouver. So for me, I post at 5 a.m. Pacific, which is 8 a.m. On the, on the East Coast. So that's like Saturday morning. They get it kind of their leisurely kind of Saturday morning. And I'm sitting here and I'm so I'm asleep when the video goes live. <laughs> I schedule it. I'm asleep. So you guys have a good yeah. time, you know, thumbs upping, thumbs downing, commenting, like go wild. Do. And then what I do and then what I do is that whatever it is, seven or eight, I, cause I don't. Yeah, I, I, I basically kind of wake up and get my coffee and go in the shower and get myself ready. And that's what I sit down to respond to comments. And basically I spend that hour, half an hour to an hour or so just responding to comments, engaging. And I usually find not to say I'm like seeking out only positive because that's that's usually the core of my community and that's usually where I'm really interacting with people. Um, and then that's where I do it. And then I walk away. Yeah. 
Okay. And again, not YouTube best practice. People will tell you, do not do that. But I'm telling you that that's what I do. And I reserve the right to change my mind later. But for me, I just sort of walk away and go, I did my, I did my stuff. I responded again. I spent an hour, responded to 50 comments. And now I'm just going to like you, I'm just going to walk away from it because it does start to really affect your ability to create. And it does affect, um, yeah, how much you, you know, it just starts to affect you in ways that are just don't make the process as fun as it could be. So now I don't oftentimes really know all the conversations that are happening. And that's actually quite freeing. Again, that's not like me being disconnecting from my community. It's just, it's just me establishing boundaries on what I feel comfortable really doing. Um, but that's my own perspective. I'm sure everybody has a different opinion on that, but that's that's what I do now. But I like that there's that clean thing and you're doing what's right for you and for your health and your channel and right, what works for you. It, even if it isn't best practice, that's what works for you. And I think that's absolutely fine. And it's it's great to say, hey, you don't absolutely have to respond to every comment all the time or do exactly what you're being told to do. Do what works for you. Right. You have to find your own boundaries that's sort of really going to work for you because... Um, you know, I did before that, before, you know, if you talk to me in December and when I was experiencing all this stuff in January, when it really sort of blew up, I had YouTube studio open. I'd be like, oh, let me just, you know, sitting on the couch, do nothing, open up YouTube studio. Let's just check the comment section. And I was responding to old video comments on old videos. I was responding to the stuff on, you know, maybe my latest video or was getting, you know, a little bit more traction, more comments, whatever. Um, but eventually I just thought like, I can't, I need to disconnect from this. Um, it's just not healthy. It's like, people need to know it's not healthy, in my opinion, to accept positive or negative feedback at this level of scale, right? And I know, I know people have bigger channels than me. I just, I don't think it's always healthy to sit plugged in and connected to a hundred thousand or 150,000 or whatever it is opinions on what you're doing, right. What you're not doing, right. Um, you know, that you're stupid, that you're amazing. Like it's all, it's all, it's all so much, right? You're just, meanwhile, I'm just sitting here in this little, I'm just sitting in my house or whatever, just making my little YouTube videos. And yet, you know, you're not made, like usually feedback is direct. It's in the moment, it's a person um, and uh, that's, you know, directly giving you feedback and you can sort of have an exchange. You, you can't do that at this level at this scale so right so i think it's just healthier to have boundaries there i think that makes a whole lot of sense now the other thing you mentioned there that i just want to point out is is we were talking about community and not having necessarily that support network as you're going through this which i think I know I've been incredibly lucky and, and shout out to my PTYA fam of going through this journey with with people that get it but I, I also know after speaking to you and other people that people are going through this YouTube journey and not having that support network and I think it's really really important because at times like that you do feel alone and you don't really know what's going on and sometimes you just want to ask someone like is this normal or what's happening so um, yeah I guess what I that was half a question, but I guess like, as you said, like not having that, that that's kind of not a fun place to be in. Right. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, like, look, like I don't want this to be super negative and thinking like that. I'm, I don't want you thinking that I'm, I'm ungrateful for the growth or for the community that I have or whatever. Cause 99.9% .9 of the people that land on my channel are awesome. And, um, and it's, it's overall been an incredibly like transformative and positive experience being on YouTube and experiencing this. It's definitely not, hasn't been negative, but um, yeah, it is, it's, it, there has been times when you have a lot of questions and um, you know, if you don't, especially in this pandemic, right? Like, I mean, that's, what's weird about this is that I started in June and already everyone's feeling really disconnected. I started this thing in June and I've barely left my house and apparently 150,000 people in the world have subscribed to my YouTube channel and millions of people have seen my videos, but I've barely left here except to go to the grocery store and to walk my dog. So your life on the day to day is still very much the same. Uh, your friends that you, you know, the close friends that you do keep in touch with, whether it's Zoom or whatever, um, they all have regular jobs. They have normal jobs. They don't understand. Um, they, 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 they do understand, but they haven't had that lived experience, right? Like, so I think it is important to reach out and connect with uh, connect with fellow YouTubers that that get it, because you are going to have questions, and you are going to go through stuff, and people do need to be a little bit more open and transparent about that. It's not all amazing, 
um, yeah, it, that it, it is it is challenging sometimes, but you know, in a fun way. But sometimes in a not so fun way. Yes, yeah, yeah, agreed. I'm glad you answered that better than I'd asked the question. Um, and, and I guess to, to finish, no, I got it. <laughs> yeah, <Yep>. Thanks. <laughs> um, to finish on a, on a slightly more positive note is out of your please excellent yeah. out of a out of your journey so far. What has been like your favorite thing, or the, you know, the, the thing you look back on and go, that was awesome. Uh, besides this podcast, Mark, like besides this, Thank you. besides like, this, sure. like, <laughs> I know this was this, the height yes. of it. Um, yeah, I, that's a really good question. What has been amazing? I think, as I said, my day to day life has been no different. Um, you know, yeah, God, that's really like a difficult question because it's, it's not like I can say like, well, when I went to VidCon and like, that was amazing and like, whatever I would say developing friendships with people like you um, and other fellow YouTubers has been great. Connecting with people, like what I love is that there are still a lot of names that I do recognize in the comments on my videos. And like some of the, some of the people have been there literally since the beginning. Um, I actually saw a person the other day that commented, her name is just a friend. If she ever watches this, she's awesome. She lives in Spain. And she said, I think I'm subscriber number 11. Like, cause I said, you've been here for a long time. And she, I, like, I remember you from like, you're for sure first 100. And she said, I think I'm subscriber number 11. Um, and so people like her are, are just like, that's amazing that you would take my first, probably my first, maybe my second video. Uh, and she's probably one of the first strangers that actually subscribed to my channel. But I love when I see people that say, you know, I knew you were going to do well on YouTube and your content was obviously so awesome. And I love that you've grown. And so there's just, there is so many people that you see consistently in the comment section showing up over and over again. Um, and just knowing that I have had some, you know, value on their life. People have said I'm renovating or I'm decorating because so much of this pandemic, people have really looked around at their house and said, you know, this place sucks. I need to, <laughs> I need to make it look a little bit nicer. They're just finding that their house is just not really as functional or as beautiful as maybe they would like it to be. And now that we're spending all this time cooped up at home, I think people are rethinking their relationship with their house in a way that they probably didn't pre-pandemic. So the, the, I get so many messages um, and comments from people saying, you know, your videos have really truly helped me, or they send me DMs on Instagram and they send me photos of their place because they took my tips and they really kind of, you know, acted on them. And that's been an amazing way for me. I don't know if it really directly answers your what's the, my favorite experience. I can't point to a specific thing, but just like, I don't know, I would say I don't know how I would have gone through this pandemic, but just that feeling of connectedness, even when I haven't left the house. Like, I'm excited to see when this is all over. And um, is my life going to be any real different? Probably not. Uh, but it'll be different enough. And, ex you know, it could be, I'm excited to see where this the possibilities go with the success of the channel, but just having that little, that connectedness to the outside world, whether it's, it's through my comments or, or other fellow YouTubers um, has just been really awesome, especially in this really dark days of uh, COVID-19 winter pandemic, which has just been not so fun. So definitely enjoying the connectedness there. Awesome. Amazing. Nick, where can people find you? Uh, you can search my name, Nick Lewis. That's my channel name on YouTube, on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Nick Talks Design, and um, those are the two places. Yeah. Oh, and nicklewis.ca for my website, but you know it pretty much just links you to those two other things. <laughs> so go there directly. So I wouldn't bother. Don't um, don't bother. Is what I'm saying. Don't bother going. Is what I'm saying. It's there, but like you know, don't do it. <laughs> don't add an extra step in the journey. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Like I LinkedIn, but I hate LinkedIn. Like don't don't find me there. Yeah. Like yeah, basically basically Instagram and YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> amazing that's me yeah love it <laughs> nick i want to thank you so much for coming on tonight i've had a wonderful time talking to you and equally i've had a wonderful time getting to know you over the last couple of months so thank you oh thank you bob it's been amazing you've been one of those people i definitely have connected with and made this youtube journey a lot more fun so thank you right back at you amazing all right guys uh i will see you all next week uh hopefully and that's that from us bye guys mm -hmm.